Um, this is going to be a pretty long video, um, but it's important that I share everything uh, that I'm going to be talking about with you guys so that you understand. Um, I haven't been making videos in a long time uh, with Benji, um, and there's uh, some really good reasons for that, and uh, I think you'll find it interesting. Um, sad, but uh, um, informative. Benji's fine. He's just fine and perfect and and uh, happy and healthy, so don't worry about that. But uh, the first part of this video, right after I'm done talking here, is just going to be a little slideshow of him growing up from the first day we got him until now. It's pretty cool to see how tiny he was to how big he is now, from basically a pound to, to 55 pounds. So that's pretty cool. And then after the slideshow, um, I'll start talking and uh, tell you about everything that's been going on. And then you're going to get to see Benji again. So um, I'll see you here in just a minute. everybody. I know it's been a long time since I've made a video uh, with Benji or any of my other animals and um, I'm just here today to explain why I haven't been and, um, and tell you guys, update you guys on the situation here and what's been, what's been going on this summer. It's been a pretty crappy year to say the least. Um, and I'll get into that a little bit more, but uh, it's basically because of the um, the laws here in my state and uh, because of an incident that most people know about that happened a couple years ago where, I don't know, 50 or so exotic animals were set free and then butchered. And uh, that whole... That whole incident, massacre, um, started these laws going into place. So, but, but I'll explain that here um, in a little bit. But um, long story short, Benji isn't here anymore. Um, 
I get to see him whenever I want, which is really cool. Um, I'd rather be seeing him here in my house, but um, not really having any choice, um, um, well, there was two options, and uh, uh, the option I chose was um, that he's still alive and I get to see him. The other option was not good. Um, and I was not going to let that happen whatsoever. So I did the best thing that I possibly could have for him. And I'll explain that too. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit today about... Um, in my videos, I didn't really talk a lot. Um, and people were constantly asking me in the questions like... Um, asking what does he eat, what does, um, where does he sleep, uh, does, can Benji go outside in the yard without, with a leash on or anything like that, so I wanted to take a little bit of time and, and answer some questions. I tried to answer questions in comments, but, um, when, um, and I used to do that when I first started, but when Benji's video started becoming really, really popular, I was getting, um, you know, <laughs> 30,000 views, 50,000, 100,000, and then a couple million views and more. Um, and with that many views and that many comments, it just makes it completely impossible to answer everybody's questions. Um, but I always tried the best I could, but this will kind of explain everything um, in one shot. Whoa, my camera's falling. Um, but yeah, um, we got Benji when he was four weeks old. He uh, fit in the palm of your hand. He was tiny. And um, he actually suffered a stroke at birth. Um, and uh, you can't really see it in the videos, but certain certain times, certain angles, you could see, um, you could see um, the effects, like physical effects. Um, if you look closely, and I'll explain some of those here in a second, but mentally, he didn't have any issues. He was a bobcat, and still had his wild instincts, and uh, he had that bobcat attitude, uh, but he was also very lovable, uh, but he was your typical bobcat, and um, he was amazing. Um, but some of the the physical signs that he showed um, that if you look close um, you can see him better in photographs too um, his uh, the, it affected the right side of his body so uh, like the right side of his mouth would sag it's just like a person it affects one side of your body the right side of his face would sag and um, and then a lot of times his right upper lip would get stuck up so he looked it looked hilarious and I have tons of pictures of him uh, we always called it his shit-eating grin because he would walk around with this grin on his face and his his teeth on that side showing um, it looked like he was smiling and grinning at people but um, it was just the effect of that stroke on that on that side and then he had an issue with um, his rear right paw it was kind of deformed and it's turned in um, but he ran just fine he climbed he could you know be 10 feet in the air in less than a second um, so he was he was in good shape and very healthy um, the worst effect of the stroke was probably his eye his right eye and um, we found out from the vet that his the tear duct in his eye didn't work um it it just was constantly open i guess because that eye constantly ran constantly so i just walked around the house with a paper towel or kleenex in my pocket at all times and all day long i would wipe his eye and uh, he was so used to it it didn't bother him i would just go over to him and see his eye was watering and wipe it um, but he, he could see um, we think he could see 
very well out of that eye. It was just that tear duct that was um, um, not working. Um, and the other thing was, um, we never really got a clear answer about this, but when you take a picture of an animal, you can see their eyes glow um, um, with a flash or, or something. Um, that right eye didn't have that film covering or whatever it was to make that eye glow. So I don't know if he had night vision or, or not, but um, his left eye would always be shining in a picture, but not the right eye. So those were really the only only physical effects that he had. But other than that, he was a normal bobcat, happy, healthy. He had no idea. He had a stroke. And, um, yeah, that was it. I decided to um, start filming him the first day we had him. And um, I just kind of wanted to record his life. And, um, I don't know, just for us to, like, you have kids and you take pictures of them as they're growing up. And um, being that he was an unusual animal, um, I wanted to kind of document his life. And I took thousands and thousands of pictures and um, started videotaping. And before I knew it, my computer was jam-packed with videos. And it was running slow. Um, somebody mentioned it. I don't even remember who it was now. But they said why don't you start uploading videos to YouTube? And um, I really didn't know a lot about YouTube, but um, I, I started doing it and um, putting all of these videos on YouTube. And, uh, and then I would delete them off of my computer, and then I could use my computer again. Um, and within, I don't know, weeks or maybe a month, I was getting tons and tons of views on these videos. And... It just kept growing and growing and growing, and um, from no subscribers, I was up to a hundred, which I thought was amazing at that time, and I just couldn't believe people would be interested in this. Um, and then a thousand, two thousand, four thousand, and it just keep kept going up and up and up, and uh, the comments on my videos and the likes, um, so it just kind of kind of took off and then um, I had a couple of videos that went viral and um, um, you know a few million views and um, which that was uh, that was just awesome I never ever expected anything like that um, and then um, the one video which is not on my channel because America's Funniest Home Videos owns it now, but you can still find it on YouTube. Um, I think it's titled Bambi Captures Bobcat. I'm pretty sure that's how they titled it. But um, we sent it into America's Funniest Home Videos, and they put it on the show, um, I think it was March 23rd of 2013. I'm pretty sure that was the date, but it was on their show. Um, we didn't win anything. We, oh, yeah, we won a t-shirt. Um, but that was it. And then we lost um, by giving it to America's Funniest Home Videos. We I lost all rights to that video since they, they basically own it now, which is kind of crappy. I'd like to have it on my channel still because it's a cool video. Um, but um, it, it was an accomplishment anyway, and we were really proud to have it on the show. Um, but it was kind of sad that we couldn't keep our own video. Um, but yeah, I started filming him and from then on I started filming him almost every single day. Um, and then uploading the videos and, um, getting emails from people every day they'd like to see. One thing I really enjoyed doing was people would write to me and say, I'd like to see Benji do this or, um, could you feed Benji by hand or feed him by your mouth from your mouth and things like that so I would I, I love doing um, responding to people's comments and doing things that they were asking um, and I mean dangerous things I wasn't going to do but um, uh, fun things we always did little little fun things um, with him and that made the videos fun I don't know why my key camera keeps falling this tripod sucks. Um, 
but yeah, um, the filming just kind of came out of nowhere and um, turned into something that I really never expected at, at all. Um, one of the things that, uh, that uh, people always ask was how old was he when we got him, and he was four weeks old when we got him. He was young, and they can't even see completely at that age. They're still considered blind, basically. Uh, and they run around the house, and, you know, like I said, they're only the size of your palm. And they run around the house and run into things, and, um, but as, uh, I think by age six, or six weeks old, or seven, maybe eight weeks old, then they can fully see. But, um, yeah, the first, uh, probably four or five weeks we had him, he was bottle-fed every two to three hours, and, uh, around the clock. So, it was tough but it was enjoyable and and that time with him was how he bonded with us to to because we would hold him in our arms and our laps and he would get our smells and become familiar with us he couldn't see us but um he knew our smells then and, and that's how they bond with you and we treated him like a baby like literally um a baby and uh he wanted to be near us with us constantly all the time so he bonded really well with us it was it was awesome um so we bottle fed him for um several weeks and then started to transition him over to solid foods we had to cut up his chicken and uh, meats really small um and at that point, since they were, he was just getting meat, we would have to add vitamins and calcium to his meat so he would get all everything um, that he needed. Um, after he was completely transitioned over to solid food, we started introducing um, whole animal prey, um, dead animal prey. But he would, um, he learned pretty quickly um, how to. Um, I don't want to sound gross, how to eat the animal. Um, but uh, he did a good job, and before we knew it, he was doing it all by himself. Um, yeah, at first we had to help him out a lot, but um, he was eating whole chickens then and uh, uh, other animals. But that was pretty cool to watch the progression of, you know, he couldn't do it in the wild. Um, but I tried to give him as many opportunities to do things here that he would have done in the wild, I guess. Even though, um, yeah, this is another thing. The hater comments that I always get and still get are, that cat belongs in the wild. Um, you know, you're an idiot. Put that cat back in the wild. And for those of you who have watched my videos and know about Benji, you know that he is not allowed to be in the wild because of the stroke he had. It would be illegal to put him in the wild. So um, he needed to be, um, he needs to be in captivity. Um, so that's why um, I had him. Um, and the plan was that he would spend the rest of his life here. And uh, in an to those comments you know it wasn't uh, I was not a person that just went out and got a bobcat I have a lot of years experience uh, working with other exotic animals and bobcats and um, and uh, so I was very prepared for life with a bobcat and I do agree people should not own them as pets um, unless you are trained and have experience but uh, yeah most people should not they're a wild animal they're they're very dangerous um, if you know how to handle them and you know what you're doing um, that's a different story so another really cool thing um, that it still amazes me to this day was Benji's relationship with Athena, my dear. And um, um, from the first day that they met, they were best friends. And they grew up together uh, for four years. They lived together um, 24 hours a day. Um, they followed each other around. They lived with each other. They slept together. 
Um, and being a bobcat, um, they're naturally food aggressive. Like, n nobody could get near Benji when he was eating, except for me. Um, um, and um, if the dogs would have gotten near him, he, he, he you know, would have been... It would have been not a good story. But um, Athena, my dear, would be laying down, touching him while he was eating his chicken. And um, it didn't bother him a bit. He loved it. And uh, he actually would protect her. He was always with her and always basically watching out for her. So that relationship was just uh, unbelievable, really, to have predator and prey living successfully together um, for four years. Never showed any signs of aggression towards her. They wrestled, um, which I never thought of a deer wrestling, but she did. <laughs> um, if he got too rambunctious, she would give him a swift kick. Her legs are so strong, she could knock him across the floor. Um, just not mad, but... Um, just to tell him, you know, you're getting too rough. And he would leave her alone, then he would stop. But, um, yeah, they were best friends, so it was, it was really cool. Um, talking about Benji's food, I uh, tried to give him live prey, because I, I wa always wanted to give him the experience that an animal would have in the wild, even though this is not the wild whatsoever. I um, thought it would be a good idea to give him live prey um, turned out not to be a good idea because um, it was a rat actually a big rat and a bobcat is actually bobcats are the top predator in a lot of states in the United States above coyotes um, they're just below wolves um, yeah in a lot of states bobcats are the top predator so they're very fierce hunters um, and uh, very dangerous. Um, so the one day I bring this huge rat and uh, I locked the door to the house so Benji couldn't bring this thing in the house. Um, so he was just locked outside into his big enclosure. I, I stood out there with him because I wanted to see what he was going to do. I let the rat loose and... Um, in about 15 minutes, they were best friends. Um, I wasn't sure what to think, um, but woke up the next morning and Benji was asleep next to the rat, and the rat was sleeping. And I went out and they both lifted their heads up and <laughs> so um, Benji hunting was not very successful. Um, so, yeah, he is a bobcat, but I guess not your typical bobcat. He was used to being hand-fed and uh, spoiled. And fed on my dinner plates, too. So, yeah, the, the live prey hunting thing did not go well. Um... And I didn't even put that video, I, vid I was videotaping, I didn't put it on YouTube because I was embarrassed, because, <laughs> because he was not being a manly bobcat. Um, so I, I, should, I should have put it on YouTube, but um, I, was kind of, I was kind of discouraged that he didn't know what to do with the rat and just became friends with it. So. And <clears throat> as you... It, as you guys watch my videos, you, you, you knew that my goal was to make him happy. To give him as many activities as I possibly could. Every single day we did activities. And throughout the day, all, always doing activities. And um, just simple things like playing fetch. He loved to play fetch, um, chase the ball, um, play with the other animals. Um, he loved to swim. So we... We put a pond out there for him, and he loved to swim. Um, and also, as a lot of you know, um, I was in the process of building a gigantic pond for him to swim in. And um, unfortunately, we never got to finish that. 
because of these new laws. Um, so he never got to use his new pawn, but um, um, it, it would have been awesome to see him actually swimming in a nice, big, clear pond. Um, I was going to have a lot of video um, footage of him doing that. So, but yeah, my goal was just to make him happy. Um, and um, he he's a bobcat, but not typical in the sense of how they act. Um, bobcats in the wild do not want to be anywhere near people. They avoid people at all costs. Um, they're not just going to come out and attack you, mostly. Um, but, you know, if they feel cornered or threatened, then they would attack. But they just want nothing to do with people. Benji, on the other hand, um, did not want to be alone. He wanted to be around people constantly. So, um, just because he was raised with people 24 hours a day, he wanted to be with us, um, be with people all the time. So, um, because that's all he knew. We were his family. Um, and uh, taking him out of here just destroyed me um, when I had to um, bring him uh, to the place that I brought him, which is a wonderful place, and I'll talk to, talk to you about them here in a second. But um, he needs that human attention, which he's still getting um, from the new place that he's at. So I'm not gonna. I'm gonna try not to talk a whole lot more and um, just uh, uh, tell you. Basically, uh, we were told we were gonna be grandfathered in with these new laws and not to worry. And basically, long story short, um, they made it impossible for people like me to continue owning an animal like Benji. So. Uh, my choices were to let the state come in and take him. And once they take him, I have no rights to know where he goes after that. Um, I don't know what happens to him when they take him. Several other people have told me what happened to their animals when they were taken. And they told me that their animals were not placed somewhere else. Um, not really going to say what happened or what they said happened to them because I can't confirm those stories. But um, um, I was not going to let the state come in here and take him. So my other choice was before the state came out here and had any dealings with me, even though I had my permit for the last 15 years and uh, my enclosure is um, perfect, my house is perfect, secure, never had any escapes, um, Benji's well fed, well taken care of, always passed my inspections with flying colors, um, even though all of that stuff didn't matter. So um, I ended up and searched and searched uh, and I found a sanctuary near Akron, Ohio, and um, uh, they just happened to have a, uh, a nice enclosure, and uh, they, they were happy to take Benji. Um, and the reason I let him go there was he, uh, the way that they treat their animals there, they give them a lot of attention every day and um, um, a lot of interaction. So, uh, they're not just put in a cage or enclosure and left alone all day, like at a zoo. So they get a lot of attention and well taken care of, nice big enclosures, and I can see them anytime I want. So that's just um, makes me feel good. Um, I would feel much better if he was here, but considering the circumstances, um, I did what was best for Benji. So, um... We're going to go up and uh, I'm going to take you guys along to visit Benji and um, see where he lives now and uh, talk to him and um, see how he's doing. Um, and I, I wanted to talk about this place too. It's, uh, it's a place that 
a lot of people have never heard of. Um, it's called Noah's Lost Ark, and they, they have a website. It's noahslostark.org, and just a really cool place. They have so many animals. Most of their animals are rescues um, that were either abused or whatever, neglected, um, sick, and they take them in and give them um, a great life there. Um, there's a blind tiger and a, another one that's blind. Um, there's a lion without a tail. The lion bit its own tail off because the owner was beating it over the head with a baseball bat when it was little. So a lot of these animals at the sanctuary have just amazing stories. And uh, when you see these animals um, now, they're just so happy. Um, they're they're really happy, really well taken care of. They have nice big enclosures, a lot of space to run around in. Um, but uh, uh, yeah, it's it's a great place, and um, I'll share the link to Noah's Ark in the description box below, so you can check it out. And if you're ever in Ohio, please go there. Um, you can see Benji too. Um, but yeah, um, sorry I talked so much, but I wanted to get a lot of, uh, a lot of information off my chest and explain what has been happening and why I haven't been making videos, um, and, um, um, just to kind of set people's minds at ease that, you know, everything's okay, but, um, it's just been a crappy summer. Um, I'm going to talk about this more later too, but, um, I'm going to continue making videos. Um, some, um, a lot of my new, uh, videos, uh, are going to be different content. I'm still going to have my animals in my videos, and, and a lot of them, um, but, uh, my content's going to change. I'm going to do some vlogging, and, um just kind of daily life type things and I'm gonna I'm gonna throw in some social experiments and maybe some pranks and just funny things nothing nothing negative I hate <clears throat> absolutely hate the negative pranks that you see on the internet I think they're pretty disgusting but I wanna do some just happy things uh, things that make people feel good with the social experiments so I hope I hope some of you will stick with me and and uh, and follow me um, but that'll be coming up here in a few weeks I'm working on that a lot now and uh, but I'll I'll keep you updated I'll make another video to announce when when those are gonna be starting so hopefully it's gonna go good go well um, but alright um, right now we are going to head up and see Benji so I hope you guys are still watching, even though I just talked for an hour. Um, but I'm excited to take you to see Benji. All right. Thank you. We're on our way up to see Benji at Noah's Lost Ark in Berlin Center, Ohio. Um, it's going to take us about an hour and 20 minutes. So we've got a little bit of a drive, but I just wanted to uh, say a little something now. Um, before we get up there, um, it's a beautiful day, a little bit cloudy, but it's not super humid and hot like it's been in Ohio this whole summer, um, so it's kind of decent today, so hopefully Benji will, will feel a little bit, uh, happier since, since the weather isn't terrible. Sorry, I'm not pointing this camera right, but, uh, yeah. Um, I'll start filming again once we get up there and show you guys the place and then we'll take you to Benji and show you what he's up to. I don't know if they're going to let me in the, in the enclosure with him. Probably not. I doubt it. Uh, you know, because of the laws, once, once you hand over your animal, it's in their possession, which was the same law for me. I was never allowed to let anybody in with Benji, ever. Um... I mean, if 
I, I would be super happy if they let me in there. I mean, I don't care if he bites me or whatever. I'm not going to sue the place. I've been bitten um, and majorly scratched by bobcats before. I don't, it doesn't bother me. So, um, yeah, that would be awesome to go in with them, but I kind of doubt they're going to let me do that. But maybe, we'll maybe beg a little bit. Um, all right, I gotta get gas, and I'll see you guys when we get up there. Hi, baby. Oh, Benji. Benji. Hey, buddy. You're at a good place. Yes, you are. Here, buddy. I'm over here and say his name. Ben. You got your back to me. Uh. Doing so good. See, he's like everywhere. He loves, he's like, oh, ah, ah, to report. Yeah. There you go. Kinda got a good one. What are you doing, Benji? <laughs> I don't know what he was doing. I have no clue. <laughs> that was funny. Benji. I think now he's trying to get a show off. Now. Yeah. He's like, wow. Will you come here and say hi? <laughs> Come on, buddy. Ah, uh, this place Benji's at is called Noah's Lost Ark Exotic Animal Rescue. And we are in Berlin Center, Ohio. They've got an awesome gift shop in there. Um, it was hard to really film anywhere else, but, uh, but where Benji was, so... Um, I just didn't want to push it, but, uh, these people are really friendly, and they do such an awesome job with Benji. So I'll talk about it a little bit more when I get home. Well, today was a rough day. Um, just left, uh, left Noah's Ark, and, uh, it was really nice. That place is just gorgeous, but, uh... I didn't stay very long. It was too hard. Um, Benji looks good. He's really healthy and he's eating good. Um, he's really pissed off at everybody still, so that's kind of funny. But he's it just means he's still he's got his attitude, so that's good. But I hope he starts making friends with people. And I'm cheating right now. I'm drinking a pop. But I don't care because it's been a rough day. Um, but um, I'm gonna go back up in a couple weeks and visit him. And um, I think just the the first time going to visit him is pretty tough. Um, but they take such good care of him, and I can't get this right. There we go. Uh, they take such good care of him, 
so um, they do a great job. And I'm gonna, I'll tell you more about Noah's Lost Ark um, at the end of this video, but they're in Berlin Center, Ohio. So many exotic animals, it's just amazing. And um, they do wonderful with all the animals up there. But, um, yeah, I had to stop and get something to eat because fuck. Stop to get something to eat because I'm starving. And uh but yeah. I will finish this a little bit later. Alright, see you guys after lunch. I don't know if you guys noticed, but Benji's in a barn. Um They've got him in there. It's almost kind of like a little bit of a quarantine until he gets used to um, used to being there, used to the other animals. The vet checked him out and said he's perfectly healthy, and um, they're going to be putting him outside in his own enclosure here pretty soon. So that was the the thing he's in now is just temporary. So which which is really good that they do that helps them get acclimated and, and uh, used to the place, used to the workers, so he, he's doing pretty good, he's crabby like I said, but he'll get used to it, um, just uh, still really hard on me just to see him there, and not in my house, but nothing I can do, but I'm going to go up and see him whenever I can, and uh, Take you guys, take you guys along when I go. I don't have a lot of footage of Benji there today. Um, just uh, it was hard getting him to come out of his den box at first. He just didn't want anything to do with anybody, even when he heard my voice. So he kind of stayed in there. So the footage is pretty limited, but you still get to see him. And he finally did come out, and he was climbing on things and that, but he never. He never came right up to me, so, which is normal. Um, I don't expect that, I just, I'm happy to be able to see him. So, alright, see you soon, I'm gonna eat this crappy, fat-filled lunch. And cheat on my diet, which I, I feel bad for, but it happens. Hey guys, I'm on my way back from the sanctuary. It was a long day, even though it probably only seemed like three minutes to you. The place is an hour and twenty minutes, hour and a half away, and an hour and a half back. Um, then I stayed up there for a while visiting Benji. Um, I didn't film it first because. Um, he was just, I wanted to see how he was going to react because they said he's been, he's been pretty upset. He's still getting used to the place. Um, he's doing well. He's very healthy and uh, he's eating good. He, he didn't eat um, for several days at all, nothing. But he's, he's eating like a pig again, so that's good. Um... But, um, he, he was fine. He recognized me right away, of course. I, I mean, I knew he would. But, um, he just, uh, he never came up to me the whole entire time. Never came up to me. Um, but I, I really didn't, you know, expect that he would come running up to me. He's, he hasn't come up to anybody, um, there. He just, uh, just, uh, you know, just kind of staying on his own and um, getting used to the place. So um, it's going to take him a little while to get used to it, but he's going to be fine. And they're so, so good with him and uh, take such good care of him. Uh, you notice he's not in an outdoor enclosure yet. He's uh, he's kind of in a, a transition um, enclosure when animals first go there they, they stay in that enclosure for a little while until they acclimate and get used to things and then 
then they're going to move him out um, next to uh, two other bobcats that are there, so he'll have some friends to um, to be with. Um, so I'm excited that uh, when that is going to happen here soon. Um, but yeah, um, it was a good visit. I talked to him the whole time, and he looked at me. He just kept looking at me and watching me. And, um, they say he growls at everybody, and he was growling when I walked in, but the people walked in before me, and then as soon as I got there, he stopped growling, so I was happy about that. He, he didn't growl at me at all, um, so I, I guess I like to think he was happy to see me, but he's going to be doing well, and we're going to take more trips up there to see him. Hopefully next time he's out in his outdoor enclosure, out with the other bobcats, and um, um, even fitting in more. So, yeah, that's all I wanted to say. And um, thanks for watching this. This video was so long, but I think it was important to get all that information to you guys and let you know what was happening and everything. Um, I'm going to continue making videos. And, uh, explain the videos that are going to be coming up. about um, uh, Athena's taking it very, very hard since Benji left. Very hard. Um, because they were tw they were together 24 hours a day. And um, um, her new friend is uh, the same species as, as she is. So um, it's going to be really fun for her. Um, and I can't wait to see them. Just, uh, just like losing a child, but uh, you know that's that's the way it goes. Unfortunately, and there was nothing I could do. So um, yeah, I will see you guys soon. Tomorrow, hopefully, you'll come back, and uh, we'll have some good stuff coming your way. All right, I love everybody and. I will see you soon. Bye.